Okay, dear viewers, let's hope that the second time is gonna be the charm, as the first game unfortunately had to be rehosted, so yeah, fingers crossed this one is gonna be just fine. So let's go and see how is it gonna look like. Okay, the time is ticking, everyone seems to be gating in as yes. No connection problems or anything inside, so yeah. Game number two between Team Justice for Telebilly going up versus Team Rust. And whoever wins this game will either get a second chance at trying to advance to the next round, or if the Team Justice for Telebilly wins this one, well, they will secure the round number three of the loser's bracket for this tournament. Anyway, the map once again is gonna be Swamp Tsairi Dune. I hope I pronounce this correctly. Anyway, it's a pretty nice looking map if we look at the textures and everything. And also, it have a few nice quirks like, well, obviously there is Elt of Reclaim gonna be in the middle. Uh, let me just go and see how much exactly. 55,000 mass to be reclaimed in the middle. But the interesting part is, not the reclaim, but the fact that you can actually go and grab and secure the Ravagers for yourself. So for example, we can maybe we'll see the wheelie expand here towards the middle and then actually go and secure this Ravager with an engineer. Because if he can actually do that, he can then go and protect this Maxis here as you can see from the range of the Ravager. Yeah, it could be actually a really nice thing to grab. And the other thing is, when you actually secure this plateau here with some kind of drop, yeah, you cannot actually climb up here, so yeah, when you drop it here, you will actually get a chance to go and secure a high, I mean, not hydra, but a omni for yourself, so yeah. A very interesting indeed what the players will do. Anyway, we already have a first scout coming out, as it seems like FTX Commando playing the... Aeon, once again on the air slot, is gonna be their player. Meanwhile, his opponent is gonna be most likely no one cares who also opted to go and pick the Aeon. I guess we will just never get rid of the T3 gunships plaguing us in this tournament. Everyone, just everyone going straight for the rest of their spam, so yeah. I guess the unit will require a few tweaks here and there. But yeah, it seems like the AI team players are gonna go for the early scouts and mech marines to go and try to harass the opponents. But also, Donny starting out on a very heavy hand. Eight mech marines already built up by him as it seems like he will try to go and make sure that nobody can actually reclaim this. So we will see how will it pay off. But also... Let's take a look at the AI factions for our team. So Justice for Telebili opting for a single Seraphim ACU, which is gonna get supported by the Aeon player here. As we can see, Maspar playing Aeon in the brownish-orange. Meanwhile, the team Rouse is gonna opt for the single Aeon AI together with a UEF, so a very interesting choice to go for UEF, considering that the Aeon seems to be prevalent throughout this whole tournament, as everyone is just getting them. Anyway, the drop from Zeta, also known as Uncut, is actually gonna stay alive. Getting a single Mechmarine inside this transport is gonna prove to be a very big boon for the little guy. So we will see him actually go and protect himself with the get the gunship. And also, no one cares gonna be the first one to secure the plateau here. Gonna start by building a single seeker, after that a radar, and yeah. He really wants to go and protect this position here. A small air fight happening, as we can see both teams trying to go and win the air. But unfortunately for the team Justice for Terribili, it seems like the team Rust is gonna be the one coming out victorious. We can still see four interceptors staying alive for them, meanwhile Team Justice lost all of them. Oh, whoa, whoa. 
poor Archsin Cut. I guess he was trying to use the get to gunship. Yes, it was get to gunship indeed. Looking at the mass available here. As he was trying to go and kill off the enemy build power available here in the middle, but unfortunately for him, it didn't work out. Now, the get to gunship from Paralon, I mean Zeta. Uh, I should stop recognizing players by their colors in team games, because it's clearly not working out in this tournament, but yeah, anyway. It seems like Zeta is just gonna go and drop the mech marine here, to go and shut down the engineers, which might try to come here to reclaim this juicy mass, as there is quite a lot of it. I'm... yep, there is gonna be like thousand something mass here, if not more. Anyway, just how much mass is there on the map alone? 85,000 mass, so yeah, quite a lot. This would actually accelerate the game quite a lot. It seems like there is a small discrepancy when it comes to the AI forces, because... On one hand, we can see that Blast Shield is actually gonna be quite aggressive, already moving his ACU versus the enemy AI forces. Not to mention, pushing with a few tanks and engineers to the side to make sure that like, he can contain the enemy AI. Meanwhile, on the other side, Artsinkat is actually gonna opt in to go and move in a little bit closer to the middle, where he can go and support Farmslet here, yeah? in the fight versus Nuggets and Zeta. So, interesting choices. It seems like Zeta is gonna be the one doing some light raiding, as we can see the strikers managing to go and shut down a few mechs belonging to Donny Noob, or should I say Insidious Noob, previously known as Donny or Donny Noob, depending on the timeline we are speaking about. Maria, oh no! It seems like the engineers here didn't, here didn't manage to go and finish up the. T1PD, meaning that... Oh... What? Wait, did Farmslet yet drop a few mantises here, or did he actually just go and walk them up like that here? I am... Not really sure about that, but yeah. The important thing is that this position... Oh yes, definitely, it's just mantises being mantises, I assume. <laughs> I guess this map will require some slight rebalancing, as we can see there are some pathfinding issues. Especially for this hill here. Because the moat on top should be inaccessible unless you actually drop your engineers there with the transport, but yeah, anyway. It seems like for now Blast Shield is being the more aggressive player when it comes to dealing with the AI. As you can see him taking the control over this position. Unlike our Simcat, which is basically gonna go and suck all of this stuff here. And instead he's gonna go and help out Farmslet in the mid lane. As we can see that the war is raging here. Between Nuggets and Farms. As both of them are trying to go and gain control over this a little rocky position as there is still a lot of reclaim available. But uh, it seems like Zeta and Nuggets are gonna be just fine for now. Especially as Donny is not really helping out a lot. He's just here to go and cheer on farms that year. So I assume he's gonna go for the T3 switch or something, okay. T2 HQ acquired, gonna go and build some T2 engineers, which will most likely build some power and then go for the T3 HQ because that man is just not building any units at all. The only unit with he can he can deal damage with is basically this single ACU and a bunch of Lobos, which is honestly not enough to deal any kind of lasting damage. Or to even go and protect yourself from the incoming onslaught from the forces belonging to Zeta. As we can see that the man is actually eyeing this expansion. Though thankfully, the FTX Commander AC is gonna also join the fray. As we can see him joining here forces with Insidious Noob. Blast Shield also gonna move his ACU towards the middle. 
And recognizing the fact that the AI is unwilling to go and do anything about the right flank of the map, so yes, he's just gonna go to the left side. And while I did say that it was looking, well, not so good for farms, but yeah, it seems like with Zeta actually forcing himself to go to the other side, he now might be capable of actually gaining some kind of control over this position here. Especially if he moves his ACU in closer. As that should buy them some more space here. As the ACUs for top team are just unavailable. The only player who had the balls to move outside his own base is Blast Chill. Everyone else, be it Zeta, Nuggets, or no one cares, they are all three just sitting in their own bases, so yes. This is not looking so good for the top team, as the ACUs are very powerful units on the front line at the very beginning of the game. And then when they can actually grab a gun upgrade and shield, maybe nano, they are gonna be a real menace for a few more minutes. And we can see it actually working out. As the Wagners, Rhinos and other units supported by ACU belonging to Farmslet, yeah? Are gonna go and grab a really nice victory over the forces belonging to Nuggets. So unfortunately for him, it seems like the Davon and Anya, the AI forces for the topside team, are gonna send in some reinforcements for the poor Nuggets. Meaning that this should be actually a stalemate for a few more minutes. Unless something unexpected happens. Okay, here comes the interceptors from the Nuggets to go intercept the enemy Renegades, as we can see them being shot down one after another. They are still gonna deal some good damage to the enemy forces, but yeah. It's a shame to see them go like that. So I assume Arsim can gonna go for the T3. No, he's just sitting on T2, T1 land and going for the gunships. As otherwise, he's not building any units at all, as it seems like Farmslet is gonna be basically playing one versus three at the left flank, going up versus not only Nuggets, but also versus Zeta and the AIs. Yep, seeing the ACUs, he's gonna go and full back. As Zeta have the T2 upgrade available, which would go and be quite a boon, as he can go and grab the gun upgrade in no time. And if he wills to do it, he might actually know building the triads here wouldn't be a good idea. The terrain is the terrain is kind of mediocre here, and as we can see by this turret here, it can actually have troubleshooting at some of the units, although with the ACU being so tall, it can shoot it down just fine. Blast shield starting with a self upgrade on his ACU. So I assume he doesn't want to be fine out, and yeah, the T3HQ is done. And the first assault bots are going to be online, as we can see the first lawyer coming outside. But let's take a look what is happening in the airplane. It seems like FTX command are gonna be a slightly behind the schedule. The T3 pigeon only finished at minute 12. But his opponent, no one cares, is even more behind. But when it comes to the mass income, 110 for no one cares and FTX command on 88 mass. So yeah, it seems like being slightly faster is not gonna really amount to much considering you are 20 mass income behind. Okay, bricks coming out from the T3HQ belonging to the wheelie. As he will really need the T3 siege bots, as otherwise the two ACUs belonging to Nuggets and Zeta might be too much trouble to handle. Renegades getting some really good value as it seems like the top team is not gonna respond with the Air Force. Especially as it seems like there is some T2 flak actually available for farms. So yeah, I can definitely understand not going in here with the interceptors, as they would basically get shot down in no time. But while I did say that the AI was not interested in the right flank, 
It seems like Maspar, the Aeon AI for the bottom team, had a change of mind and we can see it harassing the expansions belonging to Blast Shield. Who will now have to somehow respawn, but the Renegade is not gonna be enough. As we can see the Ascend down there. T2 Flak is here to go and cover the units. And air fight is happening, as we can see the gunships for Mr. RC Cut actually gonna get caught outside the coverage of the Swift Winds. And the Swift Winds, while they might have won the first air fight, the second one is brewing still in the air, but no, it seems like he's gonna go and fall back. As he doesn't want to do anything with this big clump of interceptors from Blast Shield. Farms, recognizing the threat of the double ACU, he's gonna go and fall back to the factory line. As we can see, Zeta slowly creeping up with the triads. As we can see them shooting from far, far away. Some Janus is coming up to go and kill the assist on the T3 HQ. Unfortunately, this is not gonna deal that much damage, as we can see. Or rather here, the... Bangers banging on the... Frames of the Januses. The gunship's gonna go in, they, there's only a single flag, meaning that they can basically shut it down in no time at all. As the Spectrus with their amazing Alpha are gonna do quick job of the enemy para shield and then the skyboxer is gonna go and follow inside another air cleaner popping up as we can see Zeta trying to keep it alive but the ammo of renegade is gonna be just enough to go and shoot it down and with this there is no maa available for the top side team so they will have most likely be forced to go and pull back interceptors from blast shield just circling around here comes the asf from no one cares and will they take a fight or not it seems like both teams are not willing to go and fight it. Swift Winds coming in. Gonna get shot down by the ASF and it seems like Nomad Kersh is gonna be the one who will be forced to go and fall back. As now, Leptake's commander is gonna go and clean up the remaining interceptor forces from Blast Shield. And with the Swift Winds coming out from Arm Cut, this is gonna be a swift victory for the bottom team. Or never mind, the ASF force from No One Kersh is gonna jump in. We're gonna get a few really good shots at the backs of the enemy ASF as no one cares. It's really proving here who is the Setoner. As FTX Commando, after getting a few good shots in the very beginning, is unfortunately gonna go and take the L after the prolonged air fight. I really like the mobile artillery coming up from Farmers Latia. As the Trebuchets should be capable of getting some really juicy value here versus the T2PDs from Zeta. As we can see them killing one triad after another. Not to mention, considering just how big of area of effect they have on their guns, they are still gonna be quite useful in these big standoffs. Anyway, let's take a look at the right flank. It seems like... The Loyalists are gonna be just enough to go and make sure that the pesky AI forces on the right flank are gonna be unable to make a push any further than this position. And as such, the base belonging to Blast is gonna be safe, as the man is gonna keep on amassing bigger and bigger T3 land force. Anyway, let's make a vibe check on the AI at minute 17, seeing they are making any nukes, any... Experimentals, and yes, it seems like Maspar have already started the GC in a classic AIX move, the Minute 18 GC. Which I guess is gonna become a staple of this tournament by this point. And then, on the other hand, we can see that the Devon RNG AI is gonna start producing the Fat Boy. While the Anya is gonna also go for the GC. Oh my goodness, poor Art Simcat having trouble defending versus the AI, especially as we can see that his Oblivion turret placement is leaving quite a little bit to be desired, as few of them can be seen shooting at the ground, 
So yeah, I would really prefer if they were a tad bit closer here to the walls. As they would have no trouble hitting their targets at that point. So yeah, the game have... The game seems to have slowed down just a tad bit. With the only player actually playing aggressively currently on the land force is the blast shield who is going up versus the AIs. But considering that Donny Noop is finally grabbing the shield upgrade and also finally started building some armies, we can see him actually coming closer and closer to the base belonging to blast shield, so yeah. It seems like building the HQ so close to the front line was a very risky move. Which might actually come to bite you in the yards. So we can see the pinks coming out. And yes, sure enough, he will go and grab a very good run by here versus the enemy AI. But losing HQ is gonna cost him dearly. Although Zeta recognizing the chance. He's actually gonna go and make a counter push through the mid lane. And Insidious Noob will have to go and start running away. He might have the shield upgrade and also a nano, but this is not gonna be enough to go up versus this big army of Percivals and T2 shields. The HQ for Blast Shield is gonna get shot down. And soon enough it will explode in flames, but the more pressing matter is Insidious Noob running away. Can he make it or not? Is the enemy team even aware of the ACU being here? Yes, they are fully aware of it. So it seems like the bunch of Percivals from the group which was pushing the right flank is gonna go and join with the AC building to Insidious Noob. Meaning that he can actually play a little bit more aggressive, so considering that the ACU is slower than Percivals, he might have a hard time catching them. Not to mention, Percivals actually having a quite higher range compared to ACU. Even with a gun upgrade, so yes. Donnie is playing with fire. And like I said, the Trebuchets are really gonna prove to be good versus the big land armies. Let's see how much mass they have killed. 400. None, 200. 80. But this bad boy right here. 4,000 mass kill on a Trebuchet, so yeah. They can really do their magic if you let them. They just need some time. Anyway, let's check the ASF numbers after the last defeat, or should I say the air fight. 44 for the winner. And the loser have... 35. So it seems like the air loss wasn't that big of a deal. So when it comes to the... Build power, we have five air factories for the bottom team. Meanwhile, no one cares, have five of them, so yeah. It seems like the air loss won't amount too much. And we have a big push happening on the left flank. Or should I say the middle part of the left flank, as we can see, finally going all in with a big push of the bricks and medusas. As the Percivals are gonna get shot down one after another, another break gonna go and bite the dust as the MAA is the next one to go and get killed. Missiles being flanked by the Flapjacks. As the Percivals are unfortunately gonna go and leave them to die. As it seems like Donnie managed to go and push back the enemy force belonging to Zeta. He's gonna start using the Sparkies to build up a small firebase here, which I guess is a decent choice, as it can basically provide you a foothold versus the enemy army. Poor engineer gonna get shot down by a bunch of trebuchets in a few more seconds, as we can see them lobbing even more shells over the hill. But the army, the army from farms is basically unstoppable right now. Nuggets gonna try to buy some time with his own bricks. But unfortunately, two of them is not gonna be enough to go and buy time. As Farmslet, you can basically waltz in here, kill all of these T3 land factories and call it a day, as there is nothing to go and stop him. 
A beautiful TML. Launch is gonna go and shut down the enemy T3 HQ. As we can see, the missiles connecting, and as such, the HQ is gonna go and up in flames. A beautiful play by Firemstead, who is basically carrying his team at this very own moment. Winning fight at both sides of the mid lane. Donny Noob bringing in the spearheads to go and crush the remnants of the base belonging to Zeta. And even though he might have a few TMDs available, those are not gonna be enough. As the spearheads were made to break the firebase, even those protected by TMD. By basically firing a devastating salvos of missiles. And now we can see the Spectre gunship swooping in here from Mr. Arch, but unfortunately the remaining MAA is still gonna prove to be just too much for them to handle. As we can see, three Spectre gunship being shot down and soon to be reclaimed by Tony Noob. But it seems like the Novaks, huh? The AA not only made a fat boy, but also made Novaks, and it somehow finished the Novaks faster than a fat boy, which is very interesting. Anyway, the GC state, let's see. Um, where is the GC? It's walking towards the front line somewhere, I assume. But I don't really see where. I remember AI building a GC out there, but yeah. Anyway, Donny is gonna utterly remove this base from existence. As there is pretty much nothing to go and stop this push from happening. While Blast Shield is just gonna go and give up the expansions. And we can see him turtling here against the AI. Building walls to make sure AI won't have easy time coming in here. And, there, and the response for the push from Donny is, I, I assume, this Megalith. Because otherwise, I don't see any other response happening. No experimentals, no nothing. So yes, it seems like that guy is gonna be the one who will stop the middle of the push. And Nuggets is also gonna go and build another Megalith, but this time on the other side of the map. No, never mind. This is actually the second one, as the first one is already hitting the field. Opening fire versus the AI snoops. We have a GC finished for our Simcat. Oh, here is the GC for the AI. It is gonna go straight versus the army belonging like to farm study, so I assume. Okay, here is the response. The Monkey Lord. Although I don't think it's gonna be enough to go and stop not only a GC but also a Megalith coming from Nuggets. But man, the spearhead value here is very good indeed for Donny Noob. Six of them already managed to kill a bunch of the units, and we can see a big army being transferred to farm sled, yeah? So it seems like the bottom team is actually planning to go... Oh my good uh, goodness, I missed a very nice drop happening, as we can see two bricks from Nuggets actually dealing devastating damage to the enemy T3 Maxis, as we can see farm sled, losing one T3 Max after another. So very nice indeed, and it seems like there is no response happening right now. But let's go back to the middle lane, where Farmstead is trying to go and encircle the Megalith, but no, it seems like he have actually seen the GC coming, but he have the response of a bunch of T2 air being available, as we can see Corsairs, Renegade, and even the Spectre gunships from Arsinkat coming in hot to go and destroy the GC. The response from the top side team is gonna be unfortunately unavailable, as they are not gonna risk losing their ASF force here over the base belonging to Farmslot, yeah? Which honestly is very nice choice, but the problem is... The bricks. Nobody is stopping them. 7,000 mass killed. Make it eight and a half. Eight and a half for the other one. Oh my god, this is just brutal. And I really do mean brutal. This is like a fatality. As the bricks are basically erasing each and every T3 Max belonging to farm sled here. Yeah? As the man is just trying to go and stay alive on the middle, we can see him pushing in with the gunships right now to go and respond to the threat. 
But oh my goodness. 13,000 killed. 13,000. 26,000 must killed for those two bricks. Absolutely inhuman stuff from nuggets like this man that's Skynet level of creations. Like he's murdering. Oh boy, he just murdered farms the economy. With cold blood, the man just had no chill at all. Holy smokes, and that alone was enough to go and swing the mass income into the back of the top team. As the top team is right now gonna have 1,800 mass available, meanwhile bottom team is gonna fall down to 1,600, so 200 less. With the wheelie falling below 200 mass income from having 400 something, so yes, oh boy. That's really massive damage. We can see attack pings coming out on the ACU belonging to farms. So he might either be forced to actually start running away by his own teammates as they're being afraid of losing him again. Just like in the huge open wonder game. Or who knows? It might be the enemy team pinging the ACU as they're actually getting ready to set out on the manhunt with this big mega lift says we have two megas and a fat boy coming to the front line from the ai so fun that you will have to go and start looking for some kind of response to this threat spearhead's gonna get shot down after walking a tad bit too close to the fire but let's make another ai check no T3 artillery, no nuke inside, I only see a single SMD available. The other one is gonna produce some shields. Okay, the nuke launcher have been started, it's gonna be finished in something like 10 minutes at this time because only a single engineer is building it. And let's check the topside AI, making the Raspberry factory, the Novax was finished. And the other one is actually gonna go and build a T3 artillery, which is a very interesting choice. But let's see what are the players actually cooking. As Artsim that is being harassed by the Novax, which already managed to go and kill 16,000 masts. As you can see, it's killing one T3 pigeon after another. As Arch is gonna be forced to start shielding his wall base. And as we could see on the chat, Farms Letty getting all kinds of donations from his team, recognizing that Farms is the man in need. But the AI is also gonna want a little bit of this pie, stealing the not only reclaim, but also stealing the max position. So yeah, Farms will have to go and pay attention to recover it. On the mid lane, it seems like, yeah, it's still a small stalemate, but it seems... No, it's not a stalemate. Because just as I said it, we can see a big army from Farmstead actually marching forward. The fat boy here is gonna get some really sick value by kiting backwards, already 4000 was killed. And counting up. As we can see the megaliths from Nuggets. Slowly walking backwards, Fatboy doing exactly the same. As the top side team fully recognizes the fact that they have to actually fall back and kite back. Otherwise, they're risking losing this all free experimentals. GC is gonna open fire versus the brakes, gonna start sucking them up with their greasy hands, stealing the units from the enemy team. Monkey Lord gonna open the microwave laser to go and microwave a few Percivals and bricks as Nuggets is gonna go and send them in. Straight into the jaws of defeat as we can see them dying one after another. One of the GCs will gonna start running backwards to go and avoid enemy fire as Monkey Lord gonna open fire against the enemy. Megalith Stinkers coming out from Zeta to go and shut down some of the units belonging to 
farm slot here, but thankfully, the MAA available from Arm Sim Cut supporting the big push is gonna be enough to go and secure the kills on the enemy units. As all of the singers have been removed, and as such, the last unit remaining is gonna be the big megalith belonging to Nuggets, which is unfortunately gonna go and fall down in a few more seconds. As it seems like this big push is gonna be really hard to go and stop. Another megalith joining the fray, as we can see, Mr. Nuggets trying to go and produce as many experimentals as he can, as they are the units of choice for mass dumping. We have a nuclear missiles being launched by Zeta. Where is it going? It seems like it's actually gonna go and fly for the base belonging to Arch Simcat, as there is SMD here, but it's not gonna be finished on time, only halfway time, meaning that meaning that Arch will have to keep on running away with his own ACU. So yeah. While the bottom team is gonna go and get a really big win happen here on the mid lane, they are gonna pay the price by not having the SMD loaded. So yep, yeah, the nuclear missile is gonna go and connect with the base belonging to our sim cut. And it's gonna be absolutely devastating. Kabu baby. Kabu. That's what I love to see. Total and utter annihilation through nuclear missiles. Hell yeah. But still. The problem is here. How do you stop the onslaught of these units here? Restorers coming out from Mr. No one cares as it seemed like he actually won the air fight. As we can see, the FX Commando have no ASF available. And when we look at the reclaim field here, yes, while we are looking at the missiles exploding, it seems like FX Commando suffered another air defeat. As no one cares really proving who is the boss here. But here comes the trouble, because while this push might have been working out before, right now, it is gonna get shot down by the rest of belonging to no one cares. Which are gonna prove to be way too much to handle, although never mind, it seems like there is a big MAA force coming in here, in here from Farm Slatty, meaning that there is gonna be some more life in this push here, as we can see the GC gonna open fire with the enemy Megalith. Also, really nice, we can see that the GC is actually shielding the, 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 mega, the low HP Megali from the incoming fire. Meaning that the Mega is gonna stay alive for a little while longer. Although the GC is actually kind of bugged by not swing at all. Which is very unfortunate, although it seems like the DPS from the Mega Leaf alone is gonna be just enough to go and buy us time. Another air fight is happening, as we can see, FX Commander trying to go and shield the gunships. So that I can actually go and finish the mega lift, which came in from Blast from the other side of the map. And yes, this is gonna be the nail in the coffin for the top side push. As we can see, Farm slightly losing more and more units here. Mega lift gonna get shot down and as such. Right now, I am afraid to say that there's gonna be nothing to actually go and stop the top side team from actually acquiring this big juicy T3 experimental wreckage here. 170,000 mass available and oh my god the trebuchet fire from farm slot is actually gonna deal a lot of damage here. As we can see one volley coming after another. 1,000 mass killed, 5,000 mass, 2,000 mass killed and then 1,000 and 5,000 mass killed on those trebuchets. And oh my god, the AI is just kicking the guy. Like, not only he just got shot down in the knees by getting nuked. Oh no, it seems like there is gonna be some explosion happening as one of the AIs have been killed by the Galactic Colossi belonging to the enemy AI as... The AI, instead of focusing on his own enemy... They just walked... Through the whole map. From this base here, just... When like do 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 and basically killed the enemy AI commander. What a bastard! What a bastard of AI! 
Imagine if that GC was actually here to go and support the mid lane for farms. But no, it wasn't there. Anyway, it seems like this GC, after killing a single AC, is gonna go and fall down towards the bunch of enemy bombers as the shimmers were just enough to go and shoot it down. But Blast Shield is just chilling on the right side because the AI, instead of fighting him, just decided to move all the GC towards the other part of the map, so yes. The man is just being chilling, getting the T3 Maxes, getting some economy and building experimentals, as we can see. Building a bug by him and oh my god, there is a lot of races and stuff happening here. As the AI is gonna go and try to def... I mean, demolish the base belonging to Farmstead in the mid lane. It is gonna get shot down, so the Tsar is not gonna work out, but the problem is... That the SMD got shot down by the... Spectre's gunship, don't no one cares, who is really getting a good value outside of this air fight as once again he's gonna go and win it as FTX Commander is gonna take another big L here in the air fight. And uh, oh my goodness, it seems like the rest of us not to end there. <laughs> and uh, Novak satellites are gonna be used to go and kill the ACU belonging to Farmslet here. Who is gonna be the first player to be actually ejected in this game? And right now, the Restorer is gonna go to try and snipe the ACU bling to Arsene Cut. There are a few Transcenders, the Sam's being available and a few shields here. So let's see if the men can actually stay alive or not. The T2 and T3. MAA being built up and yeah, it seems like it's gonna be enough. The man is gonna leave to see another day. We have Strat Bombers from one of the AIs coming here to go and deal with the enemy. Megalith, which is very nice to go and see. And yeah, after sniping the SMD in the middle, it seems like Zeta is gonna go and use this chance to go and demolish the wall base that was left after Farm's death. This is starting to look very, very dicey. Although, Art Simcat, with the big push here on the middle and a bunch of MAA, might be just 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 capable of pushing in through this bunch of this clump of restorers. As we can see them falling one after another from the sky. As the bangers and the bouncers are just chewing them one after another. So yeah, it seems like this push might actually work out. As there is not that much to actually go and stop them. As they even lost a Soul Reaper. The Soul Reaper have been shot down by the AI ASF forces. Oh my goodness. ASF from the AI player, from the good guy Maspa right here. Managed to actually go and shot down the enemy Soul Reaper, which is a very welcome change. Another Megalith being basically donated to the enemy team as it walked to the wrong neighborhood. As we have more units trying to go and buy us time, another nuclear missile being launched, this time by the bottom... No, this time it's gonna be not AI, but also, but actually Donnie Noob launching a nuke, which is gonna go straight for the base, belonging to no one cares. Let's see, does he have SMD available or not? The SMD is not here at all, oh boy. It seems like his wall base might go up in flames, but this fat boy right here... I was about to say it's gonna get some sick value, but it seems like the forces, the GC and the Monkey Lords are straight on the tools of this bad boy, meaning that the fat boy is gonna go and fall down in a few more seconds. Just as we can see, the missile just whizzing by all over the field as no one cares. Oh no, oh, oh, they had SMD. It was just hidden in the corner, tucked away, unseen by anyone. Not by the caster, not by the enemy team, so yeah, that was actually very, very good. But the big problem is, how are they gonna go and actually deal with this Monkey which are gonna go and kill the enemy unit here? SML being launched, as one more nuke have been launched this time by the... This, oh, once again by Donny Noob, and this time it's also going once again for the base belonging to no one cares. But the SMD is unfortunately have been just finished on time. The second SMD missile is ready. Meaning that this is gonna be yet another blunder by Donny. 
The monkey lot is gonna go and deal some damage to the enemy forces, but unfortunately, the fat boy and a steady line of triad T2 point defense is gonna be enough to go and kill off the monkey lot. Meaning that the push from Arsic is gonna turn into nothing else but a mausolation. Yep, you're gonna get intercepted as the. as Donny and his little Novaxis are not gonna be enough to kill off this SMD. Which is very unfortunate. Let's see the bottom part. The AI is trying to go and crack the code by killing the Megalith, which is basically just getting three veterans upgrades. Already 55, 52,000 must kill by itself, so yeah. A very good value indeed, as Blast Shield is gonna be just fine there. Let's take a look at the ASF numbers. No one cares, 44 and a bunch of Resterer gunships. Uh, can I click on the Restos? Yep, 35 Resterers available. Meanwhile, FTX Commander, on the other hand. 140, so yeah, it seems like the air is gonna be under the control of the bottom team for now, after losing the air three times in a row. It seems like this time they might actually have a quite a good shot at reclaiming the victory here. Let's see what is the AI cooking. The AI is cooking a T3 artillery, as we can see the Hovatan being built by one of the AIs. The other AI is gonna opt for a T3 nuclear launcher. Otherwise, let's see what the players are cooking. Two Novaxis ready for Donny and a nuke launcher. Oh my goodness, it seems like... Oh, I assume it was the Novaxis. Yeah, the Novaxis from... Mr. Nuggets are really getting a good value here. Killing all the unshielded maxes belonging to FTX Command of who will have to go and start shielding them. Strat bombers being used to go and shut down the enemy megalith, but unfortunately the T3 Sams are gonna be enough to clean up the airspace for the megalith to stay alive. On the middle we have the Galactic Colossi from FTX Commando making a push towards the left side, or should I say the north? As the Novaxis from Donny slowly but surely also getting some decent value by killing some T3 engineers and some T3 Maxis. Ah! Oh. Man, I have been sitting here for quite a while, I can feel my bug. But yeah, it was worth, because the game is actually quite good. So, the mass income is actually staggeringly high for the bottom team, 2300 mass per tick, compared to only 1700 for the top side team, so yeah, 500 more mass per second, that is actually quite a lot. With the spare mass alone, you could build a Maver in a matter of three minutes or something, so yeah. The difference is quite big. Mm, wait, did I hear a nuclear missile launch or...? Mm, no, I didn't see anything. Oh yeah, I had it right, and it's gonna... Oh, it's actually... No, never mind, it's gonna be the Donny ACU exploding as Blast should just tell it in and killed him. No, wait, what? No way this was a nuclear missile dying. What? I mean, if this was an ally, it would kill Blast, but. I am confused right now. As it seems. No, it was Donny ACU exploding. No, it wasn't a nuclear launch. It was actually a Donny nuke. Donny ACU exploding in flames. As we can see, Blast Shield going in for another kill. As we can see him killing a few pigeons. The SMD. And also now, he will just... Oh yeah, he killed the SMD. And with SMD being dead, it seems like the nuke from Zeta is gonna go and connect with the base belonging to Donny Noob. Or should I say the remains of it? As another Novaks have been eradicated by the nuclear missile. 
So yes, is this actually the comeback for the top team or not? And the or not is very, very necessary because it seems like the bottom team is gonna make a very big push with the 3GC towards the top side, gonna go and kill the GC building the AI. And the flag is really doing a number on the enemy wrestlers. As we can see the explosions in the sky. But it seems like our team is actually gonna go and fall back. As we can see that this graveyard is actually becoming bigger and bigger. As the GC push have been halted for just a minute. But here comes the support from the AI as it, it thought a chicken, the asshole bot is gonna join the fray. But Nuggets is already. He's already in prepped up as we can see. The Ravagers opening the fire. And as such I'm afraid to say that the GCs and the chicken might not be enough to go and crack it. ASF4 is gonna take some damage from these bouncers belonging to Nuggets. The Strat Bombers really doing a number on the enemy here. And yeah, okay, it seems like Blast Cheat. No, wait, where did he die? Oh my goodness, he actually teleported to the middle of the base belonging to Artsilk. And then I just somehow totally missed it because I was busy looking elsewhere. But yeah, it seems like no damage was done at all because of all the shields which Artsilk was forced to build to defend versus the Novaxes. So yeah. And they had Novaxes, which are actually dealing quite a lot of damage around the map. 40,000 must killed. 28,000. And the third one on 42,000 must killed. So yeah, very good numbers here indeed. As the Novaxes are really paying off. And yeah, like I said, you're not gonna make a push in here. As we could see that the Etota got basically shot down to pieces by this bunch of Gatling guns. And man, the sound of the Strat Bombers, it's so nice. But whenever I hear them, I just feel like some snipe is happening. But no, it's just AI bombing random stuff. Nuclear launch by one of the... I say one. It's double the trouble. As we can see, both nukes going exactly for the same target. So I guess it's about sending a message. These maxes are not for you, my man. Those are not for you. Another... Wait, what? Are you gonna launch a third nuke? I guess it's all about sending the message. Because what else can it be if not sending a message towards the enemy team that... Yeah, I have all the nuclear arsenal I could ever dream of. <laughs> Strat Bomber is going for this... Snipe versus Nagas. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work out as the man is shielded properly. And twice the boom, twice the kaboom. As the AI is gonna triple nuke the same spot. Another nuke being launched. Oh, please. Where? I guess third time that Shar, we are just trying to go and dig the biggest Mariana trench ever, the biggest hole that Sukum have ever seen. As <laughs> the another nuke is gonna fly towards the exact same spot again. As the AI is really about sending a message, not winning, but just making sure that nothing is gonna ever stay built around here. Oh man, 46 minutes already on the clock. Strategic launch detected. Okay. Okay, God bless. He's actually Strategic Zeta nuking detected. this time around, so yeah. He's just gonna go and nuke the base belonging to AI, but the AI have an... no, it's a SML. It seems like the SMD is actually dead. 
So yeah, it seems like one of the AIs is gonna go and fall prey to the nuclear warhead. And meanwhile, the other nuke is gonna go for... Um, the same base, which was just nuked by the players, so yes. But double the boom, double the kaboom as the nuclear, as the nuclear warhead not only connects with the base, but also with the one of the AI ACUs raising it. So it seems like it's just gonna be an exchange. As the AI is gonna go to try and nuke the base belonging to Zeta. What? In the flying? Why did it shoot here? Oh boy. That was very interesting indeed. Next new going for the base belonging to our sim card. And yeah, it seems like there is not a single SMD available, meaning that the nuclear warhead is gonna connect with the target. So yeah, you would think that by this moment everyone would have enough SMDs to cover their core bases. But somehow, that's just not true. And man, this base belonging to FX Commando is looking really, really nice. Especially with the gunships just taking off. One after another. And yeah, sure, it's not the most efficient layout when you think about it. But the men have other troubles to deal with, like the... What, how many Novaxes is there? One, two, three Novaxes make it four. Yeah, he have to deal with four Novaxes belonging to the topside team, so yeah. Efficiency be damned, we have to go and build shields. As it seems like the Novaxes are being used to go and snipe down the enemy SMD. Which might just fall down in a few more seconds, although it seems like the AI can actually micro its shields just fine enough to go and buy some more time. Not to mention, there is another SMD here in the corner. Okay. Okay, never mind. It seems like I nearly missed the AI being killed off as the GC from Artsy that actually managed to walk past me. Just through the left flank here to go and kill off the enemy AI. As right now we can also see the restorers from RFTX Commando swooping in to deal the finishing blow to the remaining army. I mean the base. As there is not much to go and stop them. There is two of them and the third one also coming in here. And Nuggets seems to not really have much to respond with. As a bunch of Ravagers, it's not gonna be enough to go and call it a day. We can hear a chicken firing somewhere. Okay, he's gonna die to the Megalith once again. But yeah, the Fat Boys from No One Cares would really have a nice value here because they can keep on basically kiting back this big army here but the thing is the GCs on the left side are kind of unstoppable the few ravagers here and there are not gonna be enough to go and stop the rampage as there is a lot of them coming in here and yeah restos are also gonna go and swoop in to go and deal with them as we will have an air fight happening on our hands and the fixed command is gonna take a very very bad turn although it seems like the rest of for red team are gonna go and tank the damage for the bottom side and the sarge the air wing is actually gonna go and belong to fx commando even though he had a very bad first turn the sheer amount of units available to him is gonna be enough to go and basically make sure that the bottom side team is gonna keep on winning and winning hard are they gonna be, as the GCs are gonna keep on walking. You can see one Percival falling after another, as the restorers are being shot down. In this brutal air fight. There was no finesse in it. Just bunch of units going versus bunch of another units. 
artsy, but I'm not really sure why. Deciding to go and fall back instead of putting of putting the pressure on the base belonging to Nuggets. So I guess, oh, I guess we just missed another nuke, making sure that nothing will be here. This is a noseman zone. And I bet nothing will grow here in the next thousand years due to all the radiation from all the nukes which exploded out there. Nuggets. Starting the teleporter upgrade on his cybernetic seal. So it seems like the man might actually opt to go for the suicide telelaser. Strategic launch detected. Another nuke have been launched, and honestly, I kind of agree with it. After all, if you go and erase all of this stuff here, then you can basically move in closer with your resters and with your big army here. As it seems like this might be one of the breaking points for the topside team. As we can see a very big army being slowly but surely amassed inside here. As Artsimka, together with FTX Commando, are circling around this position. Nuke is gonna connect and remove all kinds of defenses here. And nuclear warhead being launched by Zeta. The close quarter nuclear support is being launched as we can see the missiles going straight for the army belonging to Arsimkat. And it seems like it is gonna go and deal a lot of damage to the enemy experimentals, basically hitting a bullseye, dealing a shitload of damage to the enemy experimentals and killing all of the T3 and T1 units. As you can see the Galactic Colossi only left alive on 6000 HP. Megalith, 40,000 remaining from the initial 110. As the Tsar, together with wrestlers, are gonna swoop in to now go and delete the enemy Megaliths. As we can see, Zeta trying to go and fall back with them. The teleporter upgrade have been finished by Nuggets, but it seems like he's not going anywhere right now. And also another tele being produced by Nock. So we will see how are they gonna go and use them. The Tsar. The experimental aircraft fortress taking out of damage from the Sams. But still, two of the enemy megaliths are gonna get shot down. So that's still quite a lot of damage being done for free. Even more so, as you can now just fall back and recover the shield and HP on the Tsar. And then strike back again. Honestly, the fat boys for no one cares are kind of out of position here. So I don't feel like this army is gonna be enough to go and break through this base belonging here to Zeta. As you can see, three megaliths and a bunch of Sams and Ravagers being produced here by a lot of T1 engineers, the flying kind. The Triads opening fire versus the T1 units. But it seems like this big army is actually gonna recognize that this is basically unbreakable. So let's just walk around all of the PDs and destroy the base belonging to Zeta down here. Very good choice. The Novax is still trying to go and crush the base belonging to FTX Commando. But fortunately for the little boy... The amount of shielding available to him is gonna be just enough to secure the ACU. Okay, seeing how the Megaliths are coming in here, Arsinkat is gonna go and fall back. He doesn't want to donate this whole army to Zeta. So that's a very good choice here. Especially as if he were trying to go and walk here, not only he would walk into two enemy megaliths, he would also be flanked by those megaliths from the side here, so yeah. Very wise indeed. Very wise. Nuclear launch from the AI, this time going for the... Um, oh. Oh. Deep breaths, Andrani, deep breaths, Justice for Telebili. 
We have to brief in and brief out. Oh. Oh. Oh, please, no comment. No comment at all. Because you know what position the AI is gonna nuke again. You know where the nuke is coming. So yeah, once again. AI deleting the maxes, right? De deleting a single max. S no comment. I will leave it at that. It seems like I somehow managed to go and... Um, draw a beautiful Corsair on a homing run versus the enemy base. So, <laughs> let's leave it at that. And see what is the top side, I mean the bottom side team going to do to go and crush the defenses of the top side team. Is the top side team even gonna go and use the teleports? No, Nugget's not going to teleport anywhere. Strategic launch detected. Oh my goodness. Oh. I nearly missed Mr. No One Cares being shot down by the bunch of T1 bombers as he was trying to go and build a T2 TML base here to go and nuke someone. But it seems like it didn't work out because I didn't see the com explosion as he managed to tell it back to his own base with half HP left, so yes. So, God bless, we have players with some proper nuclear warhead usage, so let's see what is Zeta gonna aim at. It seems like he's going for the enemy air units, so yeah, that was actually a very nice gamble to make. And it's actually gonna connect, so it's gonna be a decent nuke. Or maybe not, because the AI and the air force is gonna go and move outside of the range just in time. Still, a decent gamble, I assume. Because, let's be honest, if you actually manage to go and nuke the wall enemy air force, which was just idling around here, then that would be absolutely brutal. Let's see the fat boy value. 8,000? 10,000? So, not nearly as good as I would think so. The Tsars from FTX Commando gonna come closer to the front line and let's see. Let's see how is the bottom team gonna win this one because they have doubled the mass income like 2200 for the bottom team. Meanwhile, top side only 900 mass per tick remaining, so yeah, that is actually very bad at this stage of the game. With 1000 mass available, you can basically make a paragon in a matter of three and a half minutes. So yeah, let's see how is the bottom team gonna go and finish it. Or maybe it is the top side team which is somehow gonna go and win the game with some kind of sneaky tail or not. But let's see. Art Simcat is kind of safe around here. He has a bunch of units available. So yeah, that man is safe from a teller. FTX Commando also safe inside his little cradle where nothing can actually go and deal with him and also i love the eye of ryan being built to go and keep on spying on enemy team and the novaxes are they really trying to just go and snipe the enemy acu i think they are or no they're just trying to go and keep on killing a random t3 pigeons <clears throat> but yeah, with this many shields, the Novaxes are not really gonna prove to be that useful. And man, these boys are annoying. Like, imagine sitting here for fucking 10 minutes, shooting the same spot, and not doing any progress in killing those two friggin' sprites, like... God damn it, man. This game sometimes is just... 
Oh, really nice choice to go and use the TARS to go and secure, repair all of the gunships. Very, very nice indeed. But it seems like with all of the units being available here, I mean the megaliths and experimental units here, it seems like our Simcat is actually gonna make a very, very good push here on the top side. You can see the experimental units pushing in for the base as the Aquas is actually gonna go and detonate the bomb on the... Okay, never mind. Coming back to the left side push. This is actually a very nice indeed because the units, the megaliths, even if they try to go and chase them, or try to go around from this position here, they are gonna be all late, so yeah, the big army from Artsimkat, which is making a push for the base belonging to no one cares in here. It seems like this should be the game winning move. Two fat boys are not gonna be enough to go and stop them. As you can see, the base slowly but surely coming under fire from the enemy units. As a bunch of angry G6 are gonna basically walk onto the mountain, open the eyes, and then lay waste to the enemies, as Harbringers are jumping in from the left flank. Monkey Lord gonna open its laser fire, as the base belonging to no one cares is gonna start exploding one after another. As the units are pouring in one after another, as it seems like someone is gonna die at the same time as there was a tele attempt at the base belonging to Art Simcat, but unfortunately Nuggets didn't manage to go and kill anything. He just died without any damage being dealt, as the base belonging to no one cares is gonna explode in flames, as nuclear warheads are also being planned just for a good measure, as there is nothing left alive, as you can see TARS. We can see GCs and everything joining the fray to basically erase all traces of the, the base that once belonged to no one cares. And for a good measure, we also have a nuclear warhead coming in here to erase the wreckage. Restorers and Tsars on a mission to go and find the last remaining ACUs. As Mr. Nuggets actually jumped in here, so I guess it was no one cares who was the one who was teleporting into what is the base belonging to an arch. And yeah, nuclear warhead gonna erase the wall reclaim here. As we can see XD's coming out on chat. Please XDD on the Twitch chat too, please. As the next ACU is gonna come under fire. Oh, okay, never mind. For a second I thought that the FTX commander gonna go and leave Nuggets alive. As he's AC gonna try to teleport away, but no, he won't have enough time, just one second too late. As at this very moment, the last ACU gonna also control K. And kaboom, baby! GG, well played, as Team Justice for Telebilly takes the win and actually is gonna go and advance to round 3 of the loser's bracket. So, big GG's, because this was a very good game. So, yeah, let's go and look for another one. Or should I say, let's go back to the lobby scene.